Can y'all hear me? Let me know if y'all can hear me, man. Yeah, man. Today, what I wanted to do is, I wanted to um talk a little bit about Fredo. You feel me? Um, I was gonna actually, I was gonna, I was gonna actually do Fredo and Cap together, but. I really, I don't know, man. Like, I I just really didn't want to even, because it's a lot to uncover with them both, and I didn't want to diminish either they, you know, stories by trying to put them in together. You feel me? My nigga Fredo. Uh, I do got my wood, man. Y'all roll up, man. Let's do it. Let's do it, man, you know? Uh, but yeah, man, today is a Fredo story, man. I was going to try to, um, if y'all, if whoever ain't caught on, or one looking at my last video, yeah. Uh, my girl scratched my face up a little bit. It's my face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, you know, Fredo... You know, been knowing him all uh, my whole life, you know what I'm saying? So, just definitely wanted to, you know, get y'all insight on Fredo and how he was, man. But, um, you know, Fredo, he has been in my hood f since birth, basically. Um, it's him. It's him. It's um, J-Mac, which is Cable Boy. They oldest brother, Big Drayski. And they the youngest one, which is Smook. Smoke the dime, man. Uh, they all lived in the cream building. The cream building. I don't know if y'all was watching the story on Lil Steve, but the cream building that D Rose lived in, that Lil Brian end up moving across the street from. Um, yeah. Before he even thought about moving out on just as shorties, that's what Fredo and them stayed. They was the original cream building boys, Indiana boys. Yes. Yes, real Indiana boys. The first Indiana boys, you know what I'm saying? My nigga Max, you know some history on for them. Yes, Indiana boys. Smoke was actually, the youngest brother was actually d Rose's childhood friend. Like, if anybody ever comes out and say they was d Rose's best friend as a kid and, and, his, and his name is not Smoke, they lying. Smook and D-Rose was best friends and they was twins. When they was young, they both looked like two light-skinned, pie-faced, innocent-looking-ass little boys on phone them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was just little Smook the Don and, and D-Rose. They was, they was, they was, they was thick as Steve's as kids. For like, shorty shorty since birth. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, it was, um... Fredo, he got a lot of all brothers on phone now. Uh Oh yeah, that's good too on phone now. But yeah, so Fredo had if Fredo all him and all his brothers, they basically had the same type of build. All them niggas like to get money. All them niggas like to sell drugs or, you know, do shit. None of them niggas like to work. You know what I'm saying? And all them niggas is like that. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? I won't take nothing from even Smook, the one who just as chill as all of them, man. He 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 could be a motherfucker too, man. You know what I'm saying? Like So that's how they always been though. Growing up in the hood, they always been some little get money shorties. Well, even Smook before he got older, it's always been Drayski, J Mac, and Fredo in the hood, you know, on some shit, doing little things, robbing, toting pipes, um, you know, a lot of just, 
you know, they was the ones off the porch. You know what I'm saying? Like, shorty like me coming up, this who I always seen in the hood. This who I always vouch been on that or, you know, been, you know, carrying this street torch. You know what I'm saying? As far as Indiana, as far as Gresham go. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Fredo going up in the hood, what was so surprising to it was going to be surprising to a lot of people is Fredo was a guy who preferred to get money over beef. Like, when it was dead in the hood, Fredo was, man, like, Fredo, Fredo don't give a fuck about no beef, man. He don't give a fuck the beef. He don't give a fuck to have ops. He don't give a fuck to do nothing but get money on phone now. This is why I think when he started rapping, he never dissed the ops even to his death. I just think them niggas didn't mean shit to him. I realized I think Fredo just wanted to get money. He didn't give a fuck if them niggas lived or die. They was ops, so, you know, he... It was fucking, but I really don't really believe he gave too much fucks about the ops. Like, you feel me? Like, because he just wanted to get some money. You know what I'm saying? But him, his big brother, Drayski, and J-Mac, Caperboy, always been in the hood into shit. And then J-Mac, Caperboy was just a motherfucker, man. Like, you feel me? Like, he... he he was just always, he he was better than Drayski and Fredo. You know what I'm saying? Cause they was really the trap stars. He was the, he was, he, he was the actually hot boy that trapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cable was just, he, he, he'll take your ass down. He is pop you, top you on phone him. Like, but Fredo and Drayski, they was a little more level headed, even as as we were shorties. You know what I'm saying? Like. But they wanted that pack. They want that money. Them the first niggas was out there serving in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, them was the first shorties out there that I remember coming up seeing. You know what I'm saying? Niggas wasn't doing it. Him and Republican on phone now. Republican too, but we talking about, I was talking about the brothers, but Republican, yeah, that's that was his ace. You know what I'm saying? It was him and Republican. That's what it was on phone now. Like, uh... You know, a nigga like me, folk, like, I always looked up to Fredo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to even lie. I always did. You know what I'm saying? Because he was one of the thorough was in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, he was one of them guys who a lot of the guys respected always since the shorty. You know what I'm saying? This is why Fredo still got a little love now because in his hood, he was like a god. On the, on the front and a dip. This before the front was even made when this shit was dip set. Like, that was his shit for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was Fredo's whole little movement on phone. I'm like, you feel me? Niggas was following folk. We always been a trendsetter, man. Real life, in the hood, outside the hood, wherever he went on phone. I'm like, that's what Fredo was on. Niggas always followed him or ran with him or ran behind him or ran shit bound when shit was going on. That's how Fredo always been, fo. And bro, like he always had that kind of like, let's say a boss mentality type. He always moved kind of militant. You know what I'm saying? Never really loose, goofy, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like none of that. No fool on his name. None of that. And bro, like, and I remember when, um. You know, they first started making, like, little music and shit, man. I really didn't, like, like Fredo music. Like, you feel me? Like, I ain't like Fredo music. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I used to think that shit was ass. I'm gonna be a whole, totally honest. Like, I, I really thought, I really thought, like, I'm damn at first. Like, I'm damn. Fredo just rapping cuz. You feel me? And, like... I thought he was just, like, I ain't think Fredo gave a fuck about rapping. You feel me? So that's when I was like, I don't think I'm going to give a fuck about folks' music because he just rapping just because. He don't want to do this shit for real. He around for them. They playing in the stool. He doing this shit high. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be totally honest about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I really never, you know what I'm saying, really thought, like, Fredo, you feel me? Music was decent. At first. So then it get to a point where, you know, Fredo from the hunt, from the front, 
we all grew up in the same hood, but we didn't split. We we a six niggas, six niggas front. You know what I'm saying? It's 2010, 2011, shit like that. Two of the guys from my block, from the six, and two of the guys from the front, like they was. It really was. It really wasn't even between two of the two and two. It really was D thing versus Fat Fat. You feel me? It was D thing versus Fat Fat. Over one of the females from my hood that's a sister of mine's, and I'm not even gonna mention her name on bro, but they was they they D thing and, and Fat Fat from, from Front Street was beefing over her. And D thing best friend, which was Lil Boo, and folks. I ain't even gonna say folks best friend, but one of his closest homies at the time, Republican, they all bumping over this shit. Like, to the point where it's, it's shots getting let off back and forth. I'm fooling them. This shit going back and forth. Oh, dang. Like, so Fredo was booked for some of this shit. So Fredo gets out, and I remember being in the hood, and it was me, Lil Steve, and D Rose. We walked to the front. It was like it was nighttime. It was busting on on our block on Pereira on 61st. It was busting. But it was busting on the front too. You feel me? O block and front street was in the, on the front. It was 600 and SKD on our block. You know what I'm saying? So me, Lil Steve, and D Rose all walked from from the from the block to 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 the front. So now when we get over there, Fredo, Fredo out. I think that's why everybody was over there, because Fredo had just got out on bro. I think this was his first day out. That's why they was busting on that shit, because it was his first day out, I think, on photo. So, nah. You know, Fredo get out. He one of them niggas. He don't even want to talk. He don't want to talk. He don't get no fuck. Like, he instantly. Yeah. I'm home now. He look at me and Lil Steve, because it's me, Lil Steve, and D-Rose, but I, like I told y'all, like, D-Rose is basically, like, they family, bro. Like, even though I'm, I'm like, I'm been in the hood all my whole life, too, but these niggas was raised under the same roof type shit. Like, no matter what happened, what happens between our hoods, they are, Fredo would never let shit happen to D-Rose. He will never wolf at D-Rose. D-Rose know this, you know what I'm saying? I know this. Lil Steve know this. This is why when he was talking... It, it, it just felt like it, he wasn't talking to Rose. He was talking to me and Lil Steve. He tells us, man, he say, look, I'm home now. Ain't no more of that 600 shit. That shit over with. I looked at him like, hmm, what? Whoa. <laughs> you for real? Yeah, ain't none of that shit. Oh, BD, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, I thought he, he. Doing it. It's Troy. Oh, all for them out there. I'm like, oh, he just tried to play with the block. He's showing out a little bit, like in front of the O. And... I say, all right, cool. Go back to the block. I tell folks now, big folks now, what the fuck just transpired. For them say, man, don't worry about that shit. This the big guys I'm talking to. They say, was I nervous? Hell no, nah, I'm gonna be nervous. Fuck you talking about? Especially if they you just talking. No, nah, yeah. Fredo was saying I I hated that he said that on bro, but I, I don't want nervous. Hell no. Nah. I just was like, okay, you got back on the block, let's see. Yeah. But um. I go to the block. I tell the big guys. The big guys blowing it off. But guess who hears me talking to the big guys? This nigga C Day. <laughs> C Day hear me talking to Big Four now about it. And him, they reaction, they. C Day like, what? He said, what? C Day couldn't believe that shit, boy. I say, yeah, folks. He said that shit. He all right. Don't worry about it. We gone. Oh, we gone. 
Shit. Man, folk. In so many words, man, to sum up the story, it went up that night. I ain't gonna even cap to you, man. It it went up that night, to say the least. And this nigga O blew at me. This nigga O.D. was blowing at me, man. <laughs> this nigga O was blowing, man. I'm fucking, bro. I swear to God, look. The nigga O shooting from 61st and Wabash, right? No, no, 61st and he. This nigga O shooting from 61st in Michigan, man. Them bitches was hitting shit on King Drive. Oh, um, look, for I swear to God, look, let me name the amount of streets in between Michigan. It's, it's Michigan, Indiana, Prairie, Calumet, then King Drive. This nigga O star blowing shit at us, man. That 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 was hitting King Drive, hitting the, it was hitting it was hitting Calumet shit on the mat, the train shit that was go above us. It was hitting that shit, bro. It was, bro. Folk, that that man that man O caused the accident on our block. I swear to God, he was firing shots so far off the street. For them bitches was going so far up the street when we got back to the hood. It was an accident. A lady had smacked the mailbox on the corner in our hood. She had a red Pontiac. A red photo Pontiac. That bitch had, she ran into the motherfucker uh, mailbox that was sitting on the corner of 61st and Prairie trying to duck the shit that old shooting. <laughs> Man, folks, I swear to God to this day, boy, I still to this day say he had a DE. Some type of 50 cal or something like that shit re real left that night, and that shit got squashed the next day. Though I ain't even gonna lie, but it was, it, it, and it was like it shit got squashed for good. The little shit, deep thing them was doing and shit, all that you feel me. It was all over. The shit that deep thing and Fefe had going on, that shit was over too. They like, squashed that shit the next day. I ain't gonna even lie. Cause it was finna get ugly. I ain't gonna even cap. That shit got squashed. But um, yeah. So that was a little. That was a little funny story that I got. It's funny now because nobody got hurt on bro. But that shit was life or death at the time. And Fredo was talking. Fredo. Fredo was talking out his ass that day too. <laughs> I'm like, man, for you say how y'all squash somebody try to kill you because we the guys we didn't have no we wasn't supposed to be shooting at each other anyway we all was shooting at each other front our shit both hoods it's over a girl we front our move man nobody got hit up you feel me well motherfucker did but still it was oh like no 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 bro why the fuck would you want two hoods to get into it and stay into it over some shit like that like what do you mean if you nobody died and y'all can all come back from that shit and y'all grew up together, why won't you do that instead of trying to stay into it? We had enough enemies even back then. Why would we try to stay into it with each other? That would have been worse for both. We don't, we, that wouldn't have served us no purpose. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah. And I never got to talk to OD after that either. OD got killed right after that. OB got killed right after that, bro. That was so crazy on the guys. Like, I never got to really, like, it was all love. Like, we all got to, like, it, like be homies after that. But, like, me really bringing that up, like, for you really was tossing at me like that. Like, <laughs> no, nah, I never got a chance to, like, holler at O about that. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga O is crazy, man. <laughs> o is a motherfucker, man. I might have an O story for y'all. One time. Uh, but yeah. So, after that, you feel me? Phone them like six, seven, eight months. This is 2012. Now, phone them start catching their way. And when Sosa started blowing up, 
that Fredo in the cut, it's a scary sight. That shit, man, that shit started making Fredo a fucking street mogul in the rack, bro. Like, not trying to gave him more street cred, but it just had him with, walking around with so much extra fame. Like, people was like, you gotta understand, like, Fredo wasn't even really the, when Sosa was doing it, it was like, at the beginning, Sosa was just doing this. Fredo was just playing with this shit. He wasn't even considered a rapper. Not really. Not to a lot of motherfuckers. But that shit was turning him up to the point where it was like, man, folk like, folk was going stupid out here, like, getting fame, you know, all that IG, this when you start being able to measure niggas, this when the word, all that clout word started happening, like, we like, damn, folks, IG going up, folk, folks, thing going up, all type of shit, you feel me? And I'm watching this shit like, Fredo just a regular nigga, folk. What the fuck is he doing? Like, he really blowing up? Like, what the fuck is happening in front of me? You feel me? Like, I'm damn, he really, he really doing his thing. You feel me? I'm damn, he really doing his thing. That shit had me tweaked out, folk. I ain't gonna even cap. So now I get to the point where... That Fredo in the cut is a scary sight shit is manifesting and folk blowing up. Like, he making music and I'm actually liking his music now. You feel me? Like, when he made that Fredo in the cut, it's a scary sight mixtape, that bitch had all bangers, man. Y'all couldn't tell me that that wasn't a drill classic. It's a scary sight. Man, that, 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 that shit was... Uh, bro, how many hits he got on there? How many how many hits do he really have on on? It's a scary sight. We we can count them bitches if y'all want to. We really can, folks. It's a scary sight is one of them tapes that a lot of niggas think that they think was like didn't have an effect on the drill scene. Them bitches, them was real hits on that note. Uh, it's a scary sight. Feel me? Like we got respect. I'm a wild nigga, you feel me? I'm a wild nigga. Stand down, nigga. What up, like, all that click like foul, nigga. Just be cool, just relax, homie. You feel me? Like, you run, you get wet. I'm finna rob my plug. Oh, that was a. Y'all wasn't on that. Y'all ain't know, y'all ain't know nothing about robbing my plug, man. You feel me? Like, that was a real, that was a real, that was a real classic. Like, he, 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 after that, I was the biggest Fredo fan because I was still on the block. Like, you feel me? I was still on the block. Like, when he made that, I'm like, yeah. Folks on that gangster shit. He, he, he coming along with this rap shit now, folk. I'm, yeah, I fuck with Fredo. It turned, I turned to the biggest Fredo fan. Like, not even on no fan shit, just on some, like, like, as far as his music, I wasn't a fan, but uh, like that. But after he dropped that, I'm like, yeah, Fredo, he, he better now. I could tune in with, in with folks and I can rap his shit now. You feel me? I start knowing like that's what I could do. So I start fucking with his music hard after that end. Like he started doing big features and he was like coming along. Like I was fucking with that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Feel me? So now, it came to the point where like Fredo and I'm and I'm gonna get his credit to Fredo niggas like Fredo Capo and Trey Savage because they all was doing shit like this blood too to a certain extent. But Fredo was kind of like when he was blowing up, bro. He was like one of the bridges between like the fame and the industry and the good life and the hood and the trenches and the bad situations. And he was like the bridge. Like Fredo was the nigga who was. The whole time, like, start doing, uh, yeah, start doing story times like how close LM Steel is. Uh, I'll see about that. Only one meets. Thanks for the uh, promo, though. I mean, the uh, support. But, um, he was like the bridge between the blocks, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fredo was the guy, like, still looping niggas in 
when he was leaving and going out of town, still bringing the guys with him, still when he was moving, he when 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 he moved his crib, he kept the guys with him. You feel me? Like when Sosa first moved out of town, you know Fredo didn't move out of town as soon as Sosa moved out of town. Fredo moved let down the line later. You know what I'm saying? So so some of them got up and moved out the way and folks was he was he was still here. You know what I'm saying? He used to have the guys at his crib every day getting high as fuck, man. Fredo was the real drug king, bro. And they started me. I fucked with Fredo a lot harder out of, after that, bro. Because like y'all don't know, like, when you having something for the first time, it's easy for you to hold that shit to the to your chest. Like, it's easy for you to be like, man. Hold on, let me sit and figure out what I'm going to do or how it's going to be before I get to putting everybody in tune with what's going on. Like, a lot of niggas be selfish with them drugs, that clout, that that access to, like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? To, to whatever motion they have. And a lot of niggas hold that shit to their chest. Fredo was the nigga like, no, nah, bro, I want you to see this shit, too. I want you to be in this mix, too. I want you to see what this life about, too. Like, that's how Fredo was coming, bro. And I was seeing it, like, every day. Fredo was one of them niggas. You'd be like, what you on? He'll hit you up. He'll look, see you on the net somewhere in the hood. Be like, what you on, little bro? You nothing shit I'm on the block. He, man, look, get you some traffic or I'm finna send you a cab. You can come to my crib, get high or something, man. I ain't no shit. You feel me? Mm. Uh. You feel me? Like, shit like that. Like, that's how I grow up. Like, damn, bro, you really want to see me not in the hood? Like, not really tweaking or none of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, like, real shit. Like, his niggas doing that off the strength. He ain't just had to hit a nigga up and invite him to his crib, knowing niggas be doing goofy shit and fronting they move and fucking up the lows and all type of shit. Like, he ain't had to do that, but he was doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was doing it. He was doing it all the time. When he was in town, he kept niggas like even you see a lot of them videos of D Rose and Chubbs and OJ and them, they all in the crib. That's Fredo crib. When he stayed across the street from Dave and Buster's DT. That's Fredo, you that's Fredo crib. You used to have niggas from 600, 300, Front Street, no limit. Everybody in that bitch kicking it with folks, cause he a thorough nigga. He wanna see niggas turn high, kicking it. With thoughts on that. He ain't trying to have motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, dry in the hood when he can help it or he can, you know, show you something different, get you high. A lot of niggas ain't did drink for the first time or smoke their own swisher by themselves for the first time. A lot of that shit niggas did for the first time because of Fredo. Fredo was taking niggas out the hood, showing them shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that he was a real one, like he was one of them real, real niggas, fo. Like nigga, who you be like, damn, fo. Like that's who you want to associate yourself with in the hood. So when I say he was like the bridge between the the the, the good life and the trenches, he was. He was one of them. You know what I'm saying? Because he had access to all the motion. He had all that going on when they first blew up, and he was still picking niggas from the hood. Come, huh, come do this. Let's get high, little bro. Huh, here goes some bread. Oh, you see, I heard you. All right, huh, check it out. And he rewarding the hitters. I'm phone him. Like, he involved. I'm phone him. Like, he never got too big to reach back. That's what I loved about Fredo. Like, he re and he reached back to all his niggas, not just certain niggas from his hood. He reached back to his homies from the fr from the lamb, his homies from the O, his homies from the six, his homies from the everywhere. He reached back for niggas, boy. And to give you a player, he put you in tune on how to get some money, nigga. He don't want you to depend on niggas, boy. Fredo out here, what you wanna sell, what you wanna acquire, nigga? I'm showing them. Folks was showing you I'm a real street nigga. I'm boy, I'm doing this shit, boy. I'm just playing with this shit. I'm finessing this shit for what it's worth. Fredo was finessing the game. I'm folding him. He was finessing the game. He knew, boy, I, I'm one of them niggas. They dick ride me. They 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 these niggas wanna be associated. He man, he getting all that shit. Fredo had too much money for 
Like, Fredo had money like he blew up and had a hit song and went number one billboard because he was smart. You know what I'm saying? Fredo was smart as fuck, bro. Fredo was such a smart guy. Like, he was always a step ahead. Never was a nigga who, like, he, he went to jail for a lot of little shit when we was coming up. But when he got on and started having that big shit and he never went down for none of that big shit, boy. Like, he... He 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 never went down for none of that none of his money making shit he was on now. He was just smart. He was ahead of these people, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was a smart ass nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he he had no problem giving you the giving you the sauce or giving you the spill or putting you on with some peas or telling you how to get some money. He had no problem with that shit, bro. He had no problem with that shit. And you want to know the real a reason why I started fucking with Fredo so hard, bro, is because, like, even after that, when I started seeing Fredo, like, become his own boss, and he always kind of been his own boss, bro, but, you know, when you coming from that Sosa wave and everything, it's Fredo in a cut, it's a scary sight, man down, you know, all that Fredo in a cut shit. Niggas start associating you. Niggas will start. People will start associating you with being somebody else product or something somebody else made or some somebody else built up. You know what I'm saying? Niggas get to thinking that oh yeah, that's Fredo. That's uh, the nigga who's supposed to be talking about in his songs. Like you know what I'm saying? I seen him getting away from that. Like not a on some oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I'm going to stay Fredo in the cut forever. No, he never wanted to do that. He actually made sure. That's why he started dropping even more music. And you not, I ain't going to say you stopped seeing him with folks now a lot, but you just started seeing him do a lot of his own shit. You know what I'm saying? Off his own will, off his own name, and his own clout and connections. Like He didn't want to be no I'm Fredo in the cut who's supposed to be rapping about all the time. He didn't want to be that, bro. And why that stuck with me so much, and I fucked with it so hard, because they say, was Fredo really to kill the Amigos' whole camp? Yes, he would have. If if they would have played with them boys, he would have tried. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah, like I was saying, like, he was definitely, he was building his own brand. Like, and he, he just was not going to be no Fredo in the cut-ass nigga all his life, bro. And I fucked with that hard, because... I had that similar thing, and I had to, I had to learn from what Fredo did to become my own man, or be, and then it was like, bro, you know, Fredo, he been in this shit even before Sosa. He not gonna let a nigga who really like probably looked up to him, and that was little bro at, at one point, like dictate like how much of a star he be or what people see him as. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt. Like I wasn't like, nah, that you you from my hood. I you ain't I ain't finna let you build me up. Like, and niggas think, oh, I'm only this and this because a nan said or a nan. No, I stopped being around niggas. I stopped you know, doing a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and I started focusing on my own music and my own craft so that I can really become something on my own. You know what I'm saying? Like. You feel me? Like it, that that shit that uh that, that that it's like some that's that's important to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 important to a lot of niggas. A lot of niggas cool with sitting up under another nigga nuts their whole career if it's if it's beneficial. But niggas like Fredo and me, no, you feel me? Cause we them niggas for real. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't you know that's you can't you can't build niggas like us, man. You know what I'm saying? So, or at least like on no rap, like I don't know music shit or my life is predicated by your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like I I, 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 I really like kind of recognize that with Fredo for sure. Like, I really wanted to, people like Fredo probably kept a lot of things in motion for a lot of people. R.I.P. Fredo. Yes, Damon Harmon. Yes, he kept a lot of things in motion. You know what I'm saying? Like, he kept a lot of things in motion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, a lot of people, a lot of places, a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, 
you feel me? You have to try to break off and do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? You just can't let people, like, try to build you up so they can have all the control over, oh, yeah, that's, I made him, I put him on, I did this. You never want to give a nigga that much power, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because it starts to get to a point where a nigga be like, well, you might not like what he said, but it's true. You know what I'm saying? You don't want people being able to come and be able to ha hang that over your head, man. You know what I'm saying? And Fredo was the nigga who he always knew. And him and Sosa never had no bad blood or it never got to a point where that mattered. But it was like, still, I got to be me. I can't let every time motherfucker think of me, they think about you. No, think about me and what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? What I'm accomplishing. And that's what he started doing. He started being his own boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was his own man. He started having his own money. It was money he was making outside of Glow Gang. That's why when he made that Savage Squad shit, come on, man. You duh. He had Savage Squad merch. So much merch, man. He had so much Savage Squad merch. He was really putting his brand on. He had everything. Savage Squad hats, shoes, shirts, m mugs, do-rags, <laughs> everything. Like, And that shit was selling off the shelves, man, because Fredo... He he knew. You know what I'm saying? He was he was like that. He was smart though. You know what I'm saying? And I watched that and I'm like, I got inspired by that. Cause he became his own man. He was still locked in with the guys. But he became his own boss. You don't when I when you think of Fredo, I don't think of Fredo in the cut anymore. I think of Fredo Santana, the big C big boss CEO. The big homie. You know what I'm saying? And it, it got to me to the point where I remember the day he died, I was at my people's crib, sleep. I had woke up, and my female cousin, she like, man, you seen that boy that be with Chief Keith that died? I said, oh. She said, she said, keep London Taylor, keep working, bro. Appreciate you, gang. Appreciate you, man. Definitely locked in. Who is Gino Marley? Scope Bucks, how affiliated was he with the guys? He... Another original member, another Fredo, Fredo Day One, another nigga who the hood looked up to. He, he got a similar come up like Fredo's. Gino, one of them niggas for sure. But, um, yeah, so when he died and shit, it was like, she told me, I law, I'm hell. I'm, I didn't know who she was talking about though. So I, as soon as I signed in the Instagram, Fredo, um, what the fuck? Couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? When I and all I did was think about his brother, cause he got so many family from the hood. It was like I just was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just tough. You know what I'm saying? That was like one of them things you never expect to read. And he was out the way, rich, turned like. So it was like before I knew how he died. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Like, damn, when I read how it was like, bro. That's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of drugs or shit like that heavy because he didn't die from no overdose or on no drink. But I just think the complications from doing them drugs over the years like he was is what killed him and had him having seizures or shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that shit was terrible to hear, bro, because that's scary. Like, you know, with lean and shit or with the these drugs that be having you having seizures, and I'm going to get real personal with y'all for a minute. Like, I used to have seizures a lot when I was a kid. You know, I was born premature. And, like, for my first couple of years of life, like, I used to, I had a lot of complications, to say the least. Like, I, I fought real hard to be here with y'all right now as a shorty, to say the least. I had a lot of surgeries, a lot of sicknesses. Like, I was just... I was I was just real like it was fucked up for me you know what I'm saying like and in my upbringing I used to have a lot of seizures and that shit is scary be you can't be by yourself really you can't really trust like when and where you uh like faint or have a like have a fucking scene like you really as is and then it's hard to like really predict the seizure you can't like you get you just like always got to have eyes and ears around you you know what i'm saying because you can just 
you know what I'm saying? Like, you can just, all it take as a quick second, you know what I'm saying? Like, you will be out of there, you know what I'm saying? And if nobody's there to help you, you know what I'm saying, or make sure you good or nothing like that, you just, you're not going to survive it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, it get to a point, you nobody likes to have to have people around them all the time, especially niggas like Fredo. But, you know, like, that shit, that shit just made me put an emphasis on them type of drugs even more because Fredo had quit the drink. He was clean when he died from it. The complications that ate his body up is from drink, but he was clean when he died. That's how this shit gets you. You stop doing it, and then the complications of you doing it kill you. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just a it's just a fucked up thing, man. You know what I'm saying? And he had just had a son, legend. He, I know he was gonna be the best father ever to him, like Yeah. So that shit was just that was just terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like it it just it just was one of them things where you always was like, Man, it could be anybody. You know what I'm saying? And we glorify a lot of these drugs, you know what I'm saying? We make songs about them and a lot of shit we say about them, we use to, like, hype it up. But in reality, this is the real about these drugs. These, this is what really happens. This is the real consequences of doing this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, gotta, this shit just be crazy, man. But uh yeah, that was uh Yeah, damn, he just brought back memories. He said, I remember you kept coming hood with the broken heart. Yeah, that shit fucked me up. I kept I'm like the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's what Fredo is. He the hood. Like, he the block. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Fredo is He's one of them niggas that needed to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he he took care of a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? And he made a lot of shit happen for a lot of people. He was one of the ones that needed to be here. You know what I'm saying? So when that happened, that shit just fucked my head up. For sure. R.I.P. Fredo, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to tap in with y'all though about, uh, Fredo, man, R.I.P. Fredo. Tap in with y'all later this week. I'm out.